Hey everyone, I'm Autumn Leva. I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategy for Family Policy Alliance, and I wanted to thank you so much for sharing part of your day with us here at the Help Not Harm Summit. I am so excited to introduce to you this next session because it is specifically designed with parents and grandparents in mind, but will really benefit anyone who has children in their life that they love and care about, because this session is all about protecting children and how to talk, talk with them about the issues of sex and gender. These are difficult issues. It's hard for any parent, and we wanted to bring you this session to come alongside and be able to help. And there's no one better able to do that than our friends at Focus on the Family. Focus on the Family is a longtime friend and partner of Family Policy Alliance. In fact, Family Policy Alliance was born out of Focus on the Family. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing from their leading policy analyst and researcher, Jeff Johnston, who's been with them for a number of years. And in fact, Jeff Johnston is a great friend of Family Policy Alliance. He is has partnered with us on bringing to you the parent guide uh, for dealing with issues in your child's school. It's called Back to School for Parents. Uh, all about protecting your child and your parental rights in school. So if you haven't had a chance to download this amazing resource, walking th you through your child's uh, school in every single area, from the sports fields, the classroom, the counselor's office, and beyond, uh, to protect your children and your parental rights, Jeff Johnson was a great part of making that happen. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce to you protecting children and talking with them about the issues of sex and gender. Take it away, Jeff. First of all, I want to give a big thank you to Family Policy Alliance for inviting me to participate in this Help Not Harm Summit and to Autumn for her kind introduction. These are important issues and we want Christians to be informed about them. I'll be discussing a number of things in this talk about protecting children and talking with them about sex and gender. First of all, I'll talk a little bit about gender ideology and what the Bible and science have to say about that. Then I'll talk about where children are likely to encounter transgender ideology. And finally, how we can protect children and how to talk to them about these issues. As far as understanding ideology, the gender ideology of today, there are some basic language and terms that we need to understand that tell us the basic tenets of this belief system. First of all, gender in this ideology is seen as separate from biological sex, completely disconnected. Gender ideologues also believe that gender is a social construct. And because activists view gender that way, they believe gender may be assigned and taught or reassigned even through physical changes such as opposite sex hormones and surgeries. They also believe that gender is fluid and changeable, that there are a multitude of genders, probably an infinitude. Gender identity is a term that refers to what people think, believe, and feel about themselves in terms of their sexual identity. And gender expression is how they express that externally. It's how people represent or express their gender to the world through such things as clothes, mannerisms, voice, and makeup. It's important to know too that transgender is not a medical term, but it's a wide umbrella covering many different individuals and their identities. Everything from trans people or male to female or female to male. It includes drag queens and kings, androgynes, agender people, bigender people, people who identify as gender queer, queer, and hundreds of more identities. New ones are being added to the list every day. Cisgender, you might run into that term, is a made up term to, de to describe those who grow to embrace their bodily reality. It was invented by transgender activists, and it describes, say, a boy who's born male and then grows to accept his masculinity and his manhood. The important thing is to know that here's the place we've come to today. What's in a person's head, their gender identity, now trumps physical, biological reality. On the other hand, the Bible and science uh, view gender and, and sex as totally different. From scripture, we know that God created mankind in his image, male and female. There are two sexes, male and female, human dichotomy are biological realities, and reproduction flows from the two sexes. It occurs when a male and female come together and a new life comes out of their lives. Science affirms this as well. We also know scientifically that clothes, makeup, hormones, and surgery cannot change one sex into another. 
Masculinity and femininity, what most people would call gender, actually flow from our biological reality. They're not disconnected. Now, obviously, some of this is learned from parents, from family, other adults, peers, the broader culture. But there is an inborn, innate aspect to this as well. Gender ideology, however, separates the two. Christian ideology and science see them as connected. We also know from scripture that sin has affected each and every one of us, including our identities and how we express our masculinity and femininity. Everyone is in need of redemption, healing, and trans transformation through Jesus Christ in our identity and our masculinity or femininity so that we grow into healthier sexual identity and expression. Transgender strugglers aren't alone in these issues. Knowing this allows us to approach the issue with humility and have compassion and grace for those struggling with this. So where do children encounter this transgender ideology? Parents, pastors, grandparents, concerned citizens should know that transgender ideology, this agenda, is being pushed in entertainment and pop culture, through media and social media, in our businesses and advertising, through state, local, and federal laws, and through our education system. Here are just a few of the ways that children encounter transgenderism, bringing inappropriate and sexually confusing messages to young people. First, in school classrooms and libraries. At least six states now mandate that children be taught about LGBT issues in the social studies. So the um, social studies curriculum, whether it's history or geography or whatever aspect of social studies they're, they're engaged in, must tell them about LGBT-identified individuals and these issues as well. In addition to states that mandate this, individual cities and school districts across the country have embraced LGBT dogma and incorporate it into their classroom teaching. Another way it enters the classroom and into children's lives is through comprehensive sexuality education. States and school districts often mandate teaching about the experiences of LGBT people in sexual education. And many of the sex education materials developed by groups like Planned Parenthood promote LGBT sexuality. Children can also encounter this in books offered by teachers and librarians. Since the 70s and 80s, school libraries have been purchasing LGBT books for children. Early on, it was books about homosexual parents, books like Heather Has Two Mommies or Daddy's Roommate. More recently, libraries are being stocked and classrooms are being stocked with books with titles like My Princess Boy, The Gender Wheel, and The Hips on the Drag Queen Goes Swish, Swish, Swish. Teachers make these available to students, and sometimes they read them to them as well, starting with children as young as kindergarten. Another way that this infiltrates school systems is through federal and state departments of education, local school districts, and school administrators that have LGBT policies that redefine sex in Title IX to include sexual orientation and gender identity. This agenda affects girls and boys sports and it affects privacy and safety in restrooms, locker rooms, showers, and on overnight trips. It's also in school counseling offices and health clinics, which may counsel children towards transgenderism or homosexuality without parental consent or notification. In Minnesota, for example, a school helped a high school boy emancipate from his parents and begin taking opposite sex hormones. Another venue is through English and literature classes. This includes books that teach explicit LGBT issues, as well as teachers focusing on or specu speculating about an author's sexuality and their identity. Kids may also encounter transgenderism from their peers, from social media, and the internet. In a recent study, Lisa Lippman reported about adolescent and young adult girls who had not experienced gender confusion as children, but began, began claiming to be trans or male or some other gender. She interviewed the parents of these girls and found that many of these young women had experienced trauma, mental disorders, or family problems. According to Littman, the girl's gender confusion occurred 
in the context of belonging to a peer group where one, a multiple, or even all of their friends have become gender dysphoric and transgender identified during the same time frame. So peers were a big influence on them. As well, parents also report that their children exhibited an increase in social media internet use prior to the disclosure of a transgender identity. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of YouTube channels where children and adolescents watch people transition through opposite sex hormones and through surgeries. Television and entertainment is another venue where children will encounter this. Both adult and children's sh shows now tout transgender ideology. Here are just a couple examples. The program I Am Jazz is about a young boy, born as Jared Jennings, transitioning into a girl. The show has been on the air for seven seasons. A book of the same name, I Am Jazz, by the author spawned classroom and library readings in conjunction with the Nas National Education Association and the American Association of School Librarians and other radical LGBT activist groups. Children's programs like Sesame Street, Blues, Blues Clues, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, Steven Universe and other children's shows have featured transgender characters. A recent report from Entertainment Insider lists 70 programs for children targeted to children under the age of 12 with a total of 259 characters with a variety of sexual orientations and gender identities, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, non-binary, pansexual, polysexual, and agender characters. Kids may encounter this also because of transgender ex access to opposite sex showers, restrooms, changing rooms, and locker rooms in public businesses and government buildings. 17 states and hundreds of cities and counties have laws that prohibit discrimination in public accommodations based on gender identity. This means transgender identified individuals have access to opposite sex bathrooms, showers, dressing rooms, and locker rooms in those cities and states. These laws and regulations also affect schools. While you can protect your children from many of these influences, Odds are they will be exposed to transgenderism or gender confusion at some point. So how should parents respond? Here are some ideas for protecting children. This can all be scary stuff to hear, I realize that. But remember, it's good to be forewarned and prepared for what's coming. As far as media and entertainment, parents need to be aware of what their children watch in their own homes and in homes of friends. But I primarily want to discuss two areas protecting children in single-sex spaces, in stores, gyms, businesses, and protecting children in our schools. Protecting children in the public arena. When you're using private spaces, restrooms, locker rooms, gymnasiums, changing rooms, it's important to learn about your city and state laws. Find out if your city, county, or state has laws elevating sexual orientation and gender identity in public accommodations. With these laws, businesses are required to open their dressing rooms, shower areas, and restrooms to those who identify as the opposite sex. Plan ahead. And if something happens, say if you're a woman and a man enters the women's room, act without aggression. If you respond with anger and hostility, you may be the one in trouble with the law, not the business owner or the man who entered the women's area you will be seen as violating a gender-confused individual's rights. Check to see if the business you are using has single-user or family-changing facilities and restrooms. If you can't encounter a dangerous or illegal situation, take your children, leave immediately, and phone the authorities. Finally, I want to suggest that you stay with your children in public facilities. Use common sense and keep safety in mind. As much as possible, we suggest escorting your children to public facilities, even if they're a little older and they roll their eyes or protest. Very young children keep with you. For older kids, you might wait outside the door to keep an eye on who is going in and out. Of course, most transgender identified men and women are not predators. But the problem is that predators have used these laws to gain access to opposite sex private spaces. Secondly, protecting your children in school. 
I'm going to start with a caveat. It's important to remember that most teachers and administrators are not engaged in political agendas. Many of these people are believers, and most really love children and want to teach and to help kids grow in knowledge and wisdom. But as more teachers graduate from college with woke activist agendas, there are bound to be more and more leftist teachers and administrators. And the state is encroaching more and more on our local control of schools and school boards. So it's important to know your state and district policies on transgender issues. You should also know if your state policies on teaching comprehensive sex ed and on teaching history. If you want to teach your own children about sex and sexuality, find out if your school has opt-in or opt-out policies for sex education. Review your children's books, assignments, and curriculum. You have the federally protected right to review teacher lesson plans and to examine textbooks and other supplemental materials. Pay attention to, to flyers about assemblies and outside speakers. Activist groups like Planned Parenthood and Act Advocates for You Advocates for Youth, an LGBT activist group, often send speakers to local schools for classroom instruction and assemblies. Get to know your school staff, other parents, and your children's friends. They can be important sources of information about what's happening in your local school. It's also important to review the forms you sign, especially for health clinics and counseling. Some states allow children as young as 12 to see a counselor or to access contraceptive contraceptives without parental consent or notification. What are the laws in your state? You might consider forming groups to look at different curriculums, school board decisions, and state education and legislation. Some churches are developing culture impact teams or public policy teams. Talk with your church leaders about how your church might get involved. And finally, attend school board meetings and connect with other parents who do so. There's more, of course. A lot of this is just being attentive and being an involved parent. Attend back to school nights. Ask your kids about classroom assignments and homework. Check what's in their libraries. There's no need to be obsessive or angry, but pay attention and ask questions of your children and other parents and kids. Finally, how do we talk to our children about sex and gender? Focus on the family believes that parents hold the responsibility for informing their children and communicating their values about sexuality, relationships, and marriage, not schools or the government. Yet parents often feel uncomfortable and fearful about broaching these subjects, which means many children will learn about them from the media, entertainment, schools, and their friends. It's important for parents to be intentional about sharing their values and beliefs with their children in an ongoing dialogue and, and, and through their relationship with their kids. Focus on the Family has many resources to help parents talk with children about sex and sexuality. And this is really important for several reasons. If your child encounters transgenderism, it's important to know that children aren't designed to bear that kind of weight of adult sexu sexuality or adult sexual brokenness. When they do encounter inappropriate, profane, or sexualized materials, it can affect them deeply. Some children will stay silent when they encounter these issues. They'll just be confused and upset, but not say anything. They may interpret what they see in ways that are damaging and hurtful, so they need to hear your thoughts and views about gender confusion. Others will be more open and talk about what they've seen and heard. They'll still need help understanding what they've seen, and it's important to know your own children and give them a solid foundation as much as possible before they encounter this confusion. And that's the first thing I want to say. Give your children a solid foundation about sex and sexuality at home and at church. You know, 40 years ago, people would never have thought, I'm going to have to teach my children what marriage is. But now, if they're picking things up from the internet or entertainment or their friends, they're not going to know God's design and plan for marriage. And you can start with this very young, with, with young children, with really simple, basic information, like God made us male and female in his image and likeness. You're a boy or you're a girl. And he explained what that means to children. God made, child, God made humans to show the world about him, who he is and what he's like. You can start doing this very early with toddlers and preschoolers. Talk about male and female differences and the differences between masculinity and femininity. 
many people can't articulate those differences, how men and women are different. Read about this and explain it to your children. Both men and women are good and valuable, but they are different. Explain that marriage is between a man and a woman. These days, it's not something they'll pick up at school or TV or from friends. Talk about your own marriage, why you wear a wedding ring, what it means to be in a committed relationship, and the special nature of the marriage relationship. In addition to teaching young children about these things, you're going to want to talk to older children, not just about the mechanics of sex and reproduction, but also about the purpose of marriage. Comprehensive sex ed teaches that sex is for pleasure and that sex is a human right for people of any age. Christianity has a very different view, teaching that the sexual relationship is designed for marriage and for the purposes of procreation, uniting a husband and wife, and reflecting the intimacy of our relationship with the Lord. Explain to your children that sin affects all of us, including our identity and sexuality. And we want to respond kindly to individuals who are struggling with these issues. Talk about how God brings forgiveness and healing and about showing compassion for people who struggle in these areas. For older children and teens, read and discuss issues with them. Explain how the world has separated sex from gender and created a false gender ideology. Discuss some of the problems and contradictions within this gender dogma. Read Christian and conservative viewpoints to give them a different perspective from the media and some educators. There's much more we could say, of course. Family Policy Alliance will be posting links to some focus on the family resources. But I want to highlight three re free resources that people should know about. The first is called Back to School for Parents. This discusses LGBT ideolo ideology in schools as well as many other issues in schoolrooms. And it gives information about laws and your rights. It gives advice about how to respond and guidance for talking with children about a variety of topics. Then there's a short guide that's also free when transgender issues enter your world. You can find both of these at the Daily Citizen website, Focus on the Family's Culture and Policy Outlet. And finally, this parent resource guide responding to the transgender issue is especially, is especially geared towards um, schools and what's happening in education. Thank you for watching, and again, thank you, Family Policy Alliance, for hosting this Help Not Harm Summit. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. I, I can tell you that at, at Family Policy Alliance, the questions that we get asked most are from parents who feel like this transgender ideology came out of nowhere and they are wondering how to deal with it with their children at home. And so I know this was valuable information and a great session. So Jeff, thank you again to you and to focus on the family. We so appreciate you. And up next, please stay tuned for one of the most RSVP'd for sessions. That is what they're not telling you about the transgender movement coming soon. I'm Autumn Leva. I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategy at Family Policy Alliance. And as a new mom, I also wanted to share with you two really valuable resources for you and your family. 
The first is your one-stop shop on the gender issue. It's called the Gender Resource Guide. It's available at genderresourceguide.com, and it walks parents or anyone with children who they care about uh, through, through the gender issue from start to finish. Where did it come from? What terminology is used? And practical steps that you can take to protect your children, whether it's school or at the doctor's office or anywhere where this issue might show up. It even walks parents through what happens medically if a child goes through gender transition procedures. This is a critical resource. It was produced by a diverse group of, of organizations who came together across the political spectrum because they care about children and they care about what happens to children when they fall into this transgender ideology. So we hope that you'll take a moment to download this, your free copy at genderresourceguide.com. The second resource is a bit broader. It's meant to walk parents through how to protect their children and their parental rights in every aspect of your child's school. So whether it's biased curriculum in the classroom or what's going on in your school's healthcare clinic or counselor's office, what's going on online at your child's school or on a, on a school issued device, at the library, at the sports fields, in the bathrooms, it walks parents through every area of a child's school and gives you practical steps to take to protect your child and your parental rights. This is a very comprehensive guide. I suggest you don't read it all at once, but really take it section by section in every aspect of the school uh, to get a good sense of how to protect your child and your rights. Um, this was produced jointly by Family Policy Alliance and Focus on the Family, and we are so excited to share it with you. We get so many questions from parents every day about how to to take action on what's going on in their child's school or to get more informed about issues that their child might be facing. And so this guide called Back to School for Parents uh, is, is an answer to that. It provides a lot of information on every area of your child's school. Um, in fact, the American College of Pediatricians has called this the most important book that a parent will ever read. So we hope it's valuable to you and your family. We encourage you to download a copy. Again, don't read it all at once. Take it section by section. It's called Back to School for Parents. Download it from Family Policy Alliance's website or from Focus on the Family. Thank you so much.